Where, how does it get better? That's my question to, is this reaction appropriate? I love that I'm being told I'm overreacting. Because then when I hear 11, 12 wins projected, people don't understand overreacting is not just negative. I look at those people like, you're overreacting. Yeah. <laughs> way too positive. The air, again, back to that word, arrogance. The arrogance to say that you have penciled in 12 wins. Well, that's not good enough. 12 wins in this league, you are a top five team in this league every year. 12 wins penciled in. You're a powerhouse. We might, that might, there's, Michael Parsons wouldn't help this. No, it wouldn't. And that no trade would. Trey Hendrickson doesn't matter. Cam Jordan doesn't matter. Micah Parsons doesn't matter. None of this matters. No team is getting rid of good offensive linemen. My point is, is like, how does this get better? You could have had Connor Williams two weeks ago for money. A former pro bowler in, in Miami. As much criticism as I had on him, oh my God, would this, that be so much better than, than what we have, David? And again, it gives you flexibility. Then I actually would tolerate a conversation with Ryan Ryan Bates being at right guard and Tevin Jenkins at left guard and Nate Davis being the fucking swing guard, whoever gets hurt, whatever. But the arrogance to be like, we don't need Connor Williams. Your fucking starting center was Coleman Shelton and you were like, this is fine. Are we sure that Ryan Poles is that good? And, and, and you, how like did I you said, I, I I back off of it because I, I like him. But when you... Lay it out there on paper. I can't disagree with the points you make. Starts at at Ryan Poles holding on to Chase Claypool for way too long for actually having Bayless Jones Jr. still on this fucking roster. Him being employed on a 53-man roster. Could have had an extra lineman. Is unacceptable. I asked you, can you name me the top three to four offensive players on the Chicago Bears and the top three defensive players on the Bears as they currently stand, right? On offense, you clearly have it's DJ Moore. It's probably Keenan Allen. It might be DeAndre Swift in terms of like pure skill players. Some might argue Darnell Wright. I disagree, right? Whatever. Cole Komet. Cole Komet, right? So skill players on offense, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, uh, DeAndre Swift, Cole Komet. None of them drafted by Ryan Poles. Uh, the closest thing to it is that Cole Komet got re-signed. DJ Moore was in a trade, Keenan Allen a trade, DeAndre Swift's a re-sign, uh, free agency signing, Cole Komet, uh, a, a holdover from the Ryan Pace era. You talk about the four, three to four best defensive players on this team, and it's not even close. It's Montez Sweat, it's Jalen Johnson, it's TJ Edwards, Jermaine Edmonds, all four <laughs> players not drafted by Ryan Poles. The closest thing is Jalen Johnson. He's a one-year holdover, and he was re-signed by Ryan Poles. Reluctantly, everybody else is a free agent or a trade for, okay? And I was arguing with Pauly that Mike Parsons might be a pretty good investment in this team, right? That And Pauly's not in favor of it, and neither am I. I'm not in favor of it. But my argument was that maybe draft picks in Ryan Poles' hands are not the best-case scenario. Because draft picks in Ryan Poles' hands are better used as trade bait. I think that's just what he's represented as a, as a general manager. I have the 2022 draft, okay? And we're going to go through these players. And say what you want about who's how long it takes for players to develop. Really, really good players take one to two years. Really mediocre players take maybe three to really show their stripes, right? For me, it's positions. I give okay. positions a different time. But three okay. years. But Fair just enough. about any position. Three years. Yeah, it's three years. So 2022 is Kyler Gordon, Jaquan Brisker. Okay. Both of those guys, jury's still out. I, I would debate that they're maybe deserving of a second contract on this team, but it's a very, very mid-level contract. They're they're mediocre at best, correct? With still room and time for some improvement. Yes. Not really, because it's 2022, so they need to resign their contracts as of right. next year. Okay. So their right. their contracts I would expire say, next year. I would year. say I'm more favorable about Kyler Gordon than I am Jaquan Brisker. And I, and I that's fucked it. up because I would say the opposite and neither of us is wrong. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Continue. Valus Jones Jr. Christ. Okay. His best draft pick of that draft, would you t- care to take a guess? Braxton Jones. I would argue Rick his Johnson second was part of that. Nope. No, I would no, argue uh, his second best draft pick of that draft, 2022, uh, is Jalen uh, Jones. Yes. And then Jalen Jones in the sixth or seventh. Was round. the defensive end drafted? In that Dominique draft Robinson team? was yeah. fifth round. 
Trust in Ebner, uh, Kramer, Doug Kramer, Jatiree Carter, and Trenton Gill. Okay. And then we also made like six waiver wire moves that year. Sure. And then we, we and then and then also just like, listen, not, like I said, this is we're gonna go back and forth because if anything, I'm on the one side and you're on the other. Also, we started off, I believe, with six picks and wound up with like ten. Sure. So and those are your ten need of an overhaul, but sh- but you're right. But what you're saying is correct. And and I here's where I'm gonna backpedal a little bit, and I'll give him credit, and I'm not gonna get too shitty about 2022. I went through and looked for picks after our picks. There's really 2022 was a post COVID really shitty draft. A lot of shitty players. That's a good point. But just just a point like to be made like starting uh, guards like Cam Jurgens after Valus Jones Jr. So you could have had this players like Abraham Lucas starting right tackle of the Seattle Seahawks. Isaiah likely was drafted in the fourth round. Okay. Uh, yeah. There you go. So just just little things players of need but you just chose to ignore them. And here's number 23 draft. Okay. And the jury's still out. Darnell Wright, Jervon Dexter, Zach Pickens, Tyreek Stevenson, Roshan Johnson, Tyler Scott, Noah Sewell, Smith, I wrote down, and Travis Bell. Oh, it's Terrell Smith. Terrell Terrell Smith. 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 Yeah, Yeah. Terrell Smith. Terrell Smith. As of right now, not a terrible draft. Okay. But Darnell still, Wright, like you said, you still, still need time to pan this one out. A lot of time. Zach Pickens, I think we can agree, is just pretty much a, a, a bust. He's he's just not existent. He's not relevant. He's not existent. Jervon Dexter's pretty good. Tyreek, through two weeks, has been pretty bad. One of the worst graded PFF corners in the league. Understood. He did. The entire he, game plan he, against Houston was to pick on Tyreek, and it worked. Okay. Okay, just I mean, it, throwing it out it, there. It, it I don't. Lo- I love Tyreek. Love him. I like him. I love him. He's not a perfect player by any means. Not He's by still any young. Means. However, a four interception rookie season. He, he, there's some upside to Tyreek. Roshan Johnson is got punched in the face. Yeah, sure. Um, Tyler Scott was an active, healthy scratch week one. Over Valus Jones? Okay. Noah Sewell hasn't been healthy or played a game. Terrell Smith has probably been second best rookie from this class in terms of proving it on the field. And I mean, then Travis... Dexter, Jervon Dexter, Darnell Wright, Tyreek Stevenson. I would give them all more of an upside than okay. Terrell Smith. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And then Travis Bell. I wrote down and I started going through the 2023 draft picks that were taken after these guys, and the list is astonishing. It got uh, worse and worse and worse you know, and worse as I went. Real quick, you can do this every year with just about any team, though. Sure. But this is recent, and we're in it. So and it's like, yeah. No, you no, 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 no. I got specific. Okay. Let's this is not just, just like a bunch of pro bowlers I just fucking threw out that every team okay. skipped. All right, all right. So I went for positions of need, offensive center, offensive guard, 10 players that are starting linemen in the NFL that you could have had for next to nothing. Joe Tipman drafted, th- uh, drafted 43rd, starting off offensive guard. Matt Bergeron, starting offensive guard, drafted at 38. Keon White, starting uh, center, uh, drafted 39. Cody Motch drafted 47th, starting offensive guard for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, we've gone through four starting interior offensive linemen between 38 and 47 at this point. And that is a draft pick that you didn't have, but you probably could have gotten. A pick after, every pick is after Zach Pickens naming these starting centers and starting guards. Exclusively, only starters. John Michael Schmitz, Juice Juice Scruggs, Tyler Steen, Byron Young was a defensive tackle taken. So I'm swapping those as in as if like you could have drafted a defensive tackle later and taken an offensive guard or center earlier. Anthony Bradford and Dewan Jones in the fifth. I got to the fifth round before I gave up. With starting yeah. offensive linemen taken in last year's draft only. We got to 10. 
and the arrogance, yet again, I throw that word, arrogance, that you didn't need one of these guys is fucking absurd. 